Hi, um, my name is Xenia, as you heard already, and uh, I'm very pleased to actually give finally my talk um, after I was hanging out on a bus for seven hours. So um, I'm working with Dr. Wee Young at the University of Calgary, and what I want to tell you about today is actually amphoterism B. Um, when I started this project around about three and a half years ago, um, I'm actually at the end of my funding with the AIHS, each and every medical um, doctor I met told me, oh my gosh, you're working with amphotericin. It's amphoterrible. And um, I was uh, very flustered about that because I didn't know when I was started what I got into that. But I got used over the years to actually discuss that with medical doctors. And um, amphotericin B is a drug which is around for over 30 years, I assume. And um, actually, patients are treated who have uh, lethal fungal infections. So for example, HIV patients or cancer patients who encounter um, fungal infections are treated with amphotericin B. And unfortunately, um, this drug is given in such a high um, dose that they encounter terrible, uh, terrible side effects. Um, therefore, they named it after years and years of experience, amphoterrible. I call it amphoterrific, and uh, I want to tell you why. But um, first, let me talk about multiple sclerosis. As you heard before, I'm um, in MS research. Um, our laboratory actually focused on the what, the how, and why actually MS occurs. And um, we tried to find answers to that. As you might know, um, MS, Canada has the highest prevalence of MS in the world. And uh, actually the most common neurological disease in Canada in young adults. So it gives um, very much impact of research actually to focus on this, uh, this disease. MS can uh, cause loss of balance, um, impaired speech, loss of vision, um, extremely fatigue, so um, it has a high impact on actually the people who are suffering with MS. Um, it's more likely that a woman, three times more likely um, that a woman gets MS in comparison to men, and we still don't know why um, that is. And um, MS was described in the late 1860s from a French neurologist, and uh, up to date we still have no idea what causes MS or um, why actually women are more affected than men. So um, what we know is from a lot of research done in the last years that immune cells actually entering the CNS and uh, damage our um, axons and especially actually the myelin sheet around our axons, the isolation which actually makes our signal nerves traveling from our um, CNS to the little toe and uh, upwards again. So and um, those cells um, destroy the myelin and patients develop so-called lesion. Those are those demyelinated areas. And um, depending where they actually have found, this defines the disability of the MS patient. So uh, it's possible to actually image those lesions. Um, it's very well known that they're there, um, but often they're there. Patients don't have any disability. Sometimes you only have a small lesion. Your uh, patient is very much impaired. So it's still a little bit of a, of a mystery what's going on there and why actually certain sites are affected or not. I have to say, within the last 20 years, um, MS research made a huge progress. Um, finally, we have actually medications to treat the symptoms, not the cause of MS, which still baffles us as researchers as well. Um, all the medications that are currently available to treat MS are um, only focusing, or mainly focusing, on the uh, inflammatory, on the immune component of the um, of um, MS. But nothing, actually nothing else targets um, the repair mechanism to um, repair those damaged lesion sites. When I started my project, um, we were looking actually for a medication like that that was able to um, enhance the endogenous repair mechanism of the CNS because it's known that um, some of the patients who encounter MS are very well capable of um, repairing themselves to repair the lesions. But in around about 95%, the repair um, is far from com complete and um, not really happening at all. So our approach was, and uh, Andre, this is mouse data, just to, uh, in no cure. Um, so what we did, we um, scoured um, a library of 1,040 compounds that um, contained FDA-approved drugs, off-patent drugs, so something that was actually around for years. And uh, we looked for a compound that would be able to stimulate those endogenous repair cells, microglia cells, which are resident um, CNS cells, that actually munch up the myelin debris 
um, around that area. And it's uh, very important to clear um, the lesion site to actually being able to repair. Out of this 1,040 compounds, only one compound was actually capable of activating those cells, and this was amphotericin B. And I felt free to actually uh, change the nickname from amphoterrible to amphoterific. Um, we tested that in animals, mouse, no rats, um, with a focal uh, demyelinating uh, model. So I actually inject um, a compound in, in my mice where I actually have a lesion. Um, we, um, treat those mice with amphotericin B and we actually have a repair, a way better outcome in comparison to the untreated mice, which is a tremendous outcome, but uh, as always, there's a but. Um, our mice have a very focal lesion. I very know, uh, I'm very well aware of the time point when and where this lesion occurs. In MS patients, we have lesions that are scattered all over the brain and in various stages, so lesions ages over time in an MS patient. So, we have to do a lot of more basic research to find out how we can actually stimulate, uh, stimulate those cells, but I think we kind of have a proof of principle that we're actually capable of enhancing endogenous repair by stimulating only certain cells within the CNS. How we actually translate that now into an MS patient, we still have way more research to do, but I think it's a right step in the end and good direction. Thank you very much.